Hey everybody, it's Lon Seiben, and we are here at Cape Canaveral for the launch of that rocket back there. That is the Falcon 9 from SpaceX. What's happening around me right now is that members of the media are setting up remote cameras. They're remotely triggered, uh, so when there's either sound or at the right time, those cameras will start recording video uh, and pictures very close to the launch pad from where we're standing. And uh, we can't obviously be here when one of these goes off, so those cameras um, are just all going to operate remotely, and then they let everybody back in here later this evening to uh, pick them up. We've done those in the past. We're not doing one on this mission, but we have done those in the past, and I'll uh, share a, a couple links in the uh, comments below so you can see uh, some of the things that we've done before with uh, rocket launches. So we're here now with Jeff Seibert, who I've been meeting here at the uh, Kennedy Space Center for a couple of years now, and uh, what he's been doing, which was what all the other press here are doing as well, is setting up remote cameras to capture the rocket as it takes off, and uh, we have a clip here of Jeff setting up his one of his cameras. Let's take a look at that. Four heaters, basically. They keep it warm. Yeah, see, yeah. they're working off of a, a humidity sensor and temperature sensors on all the on all the rings that go around. But I finally got it to the point where I've, everything's in one box without having to screw around with all this stuff. So you put a battery on it, turn it on, and hope for the best. I, this right? one doesn't even need a battery because I'm not using heater system. Okay. Uh, just this battery. Yeah, this right, is the camera battery. Right. Same timer we've been using for a long time. And so you're just doing a timer because of the launch window, or are you doing a sound trigger? This or? is video. Video, okay. These are all video. And sound trigger just doesn't work with video. It just takes too long. Right, so just turn it on and let it run. Let it run. All right, so Jeff, that is one of how many? 13 cameras, 10 of them video cameras, three SLRs. So uh, that's a lot. <laughs> so I still have two to set up on the beach house mound. So you're going to go and set up two more over there. And then we only did 11. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so you have, I, I guess you go for volume here. Like what's the percentage of, of outcome here for getting one of these to work? The Atlas five last time was a hundred percent. We've had about 30%. Depends on the weather. If it goes on time. And so you have a timer inside each of these boxes, right? So that triggers the camera? The SLRs generally have a, when stills, they have a sound trigger. So it listens for the sound of the rocket and then when it, and it hears something loud enough. And they're fast enough that they can start. The video cameras, we start five or six minutes before launch. So they're up and running when launch takes place. So generally everything, everything has to take off at a certain time, right? So there's a launch window so you know how it's going to go, right? Sometimes we turn them on half hour early so the fog burns off. Most of us have now have fog heaters something work against the fog. So you've got inside these things a little heater that detects the amount of humidity and then turns on a heater? Yes, it does. So, so how, how long is that? The battery lasts a long time that way. I, I, now, how long does that take to design something like this? So you've been doing this for a while, and I've seen like your initial like your initial steps was everything in one box. You had like seven or eight cameras in there. <laughs> yeah, we did. did uh, so, so now you're down to like separate units. How long does it take to get all these things prepared, and what, what, is, what, do you have, what, what got you into this? Well, a friend from England, Mike Barrett, got me started. We're worth wiredforspace.com and he started making the timers and we had some ideas and we kept going and he's an astronomer so he does heaters for his his telescopes and works the same. Offshoot from that, yeah. And and the rest is history. So it's uh and how many and how many how long have you been doing this for? STS 133. So, oh, you started this then? Oh, this is pretty new for you. Yeah, I think I've done 53 at this point. Okay, which is quite a few. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of launches here. They don't think there's a space program, but we have what, 18 scheduled this year. So there's quite a bit going on here. So Jeff Seibert, thanks a lot for coming by and talking to us. I, I, I've really been fascinated with what it takes to build one of these units. And there's really no place to go out and buy any of this, right? No, you gotta keep working. So, and everyone's got their own strategy. And we all make all the mistakes possible as quickly as possible. And then we're done with the mistakes. Right, and then you have a next launch. And there's always a next launch that you can get going again. And so. usually the mistake is not turning something on. It's pretty simple. Everybody makes, everybody makes that one because it's too simple. So really just the turning the thing on is really the, the biggest mistake people make. I think so. That seems to be the the most common one. Great, well thank you. My first one. <laughs> thank you very much.